Hello, everybody, wherever you may be. We made it, finally. Welcome back to my shack in Northwest Oregon. This is Ham Radio Live, show number 94. How are you? It's good to see you. I'd like to ask you to please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, especially the subscribe button, as it'll help people who have an interest in Ham Radio to find the channel and learn all about it, hopefully get themselves into a hobby that they'll love for life. Welcome to the show. A great time in Mississippi. Enjoyed very much, especially meeting Mr. Jew of MFJ. Man, when you put your initials all over boxes and bags, you want to stand behind them. You want them to work. And Mr. Jew was just such an honest pleasure to spend time with. I hope you enjoyed the shows there at MFJ. For me, it was an honor. Welcome to the show. This should be a fun one. I hope you'll enjoy it. Ham Radio Microphones can make a big difference in the way your station sounds. They really can. Now, mics today, condenser mics, which come with our rigs, are pretty good. They are actually are not bad at all. In some cases, the condenser mic that a radio comes with standard does the job perfectly. But maybe you want to change the way your microphone sounds. Now, you might have noticed a little bit of differences around here been busy today couldn't get cq calling going because it seemed like every single time we tried something else came up so i thought well let's make some lemonade out of lemons we'll break a good show out for you hopefully tonight that'll help you learn a little bit about microphones how they sound what the differences are we've got six studio microphones we're going to use this is the first one. This is the Shure Beta 57 and what it sounds like. Keep in mind, all the microphones we use tonight will have zero compression. They will have zero equalization. The only thing on is the preamp. Now, on most amplifiers, excuse me, on most microphones, you're going to need a preamp. You just do because they need power to convert your voice into electrical energy. So, this is the first one. It's the Shure Beta 57. Here's what it sounds like. There's going to be some cracking a little bit here as I put the other microphones in. The next one, this is the Shure Beta 57A. Next one will be the Shure 57. Both are studio quality mics. Both tend to bring up more of the mid and upper frequency range of your voice. Let me change over to the regular Shure 57. Just one moment. All right, so there you go. Hear the difference? Actually, this is the 57A. Sorry about that. This is the 57. So 57 here. This is the beta 57A. And as you can tell, a little more crispness in this microphone. This is the 57A by Sure. Again, you hear the difference in the highs. The highs are more pronounced with this microphone than with the regular 57. That's why regular microphones can make a difference in the way your station sounds. Now, keep in mind, most ham radio stations are going to have compression, they're going to have equalization, and it's going to change. It's going to help your microphone sound its best. This is just running flat, no equalization, and zero on compression. So, Steve, welcome to the show. Nice to see you. Good evening to you, my friend. Beta is better. Okay. Well, we'll find out. We've got some other mics to show you besides these two. Again, seven studio quality mics will be here. I'm going to bring this down. This one's a little hotter than the first one. So we'll bring down just a little bit of the gain. This is the Sherb 57A. We're going to now move to a more classic looking microphone. Here we go. Okay. Now you can almost now hear the difference. It's much more, it's more muffled, but full. You hear more of the full range of a microphone. This is the Shure 55. Now, not the Super 55, the standard Shure 55. And you can kind of see Elvis holding on to it, right? Well, it's iconic. It's part of their legendary collection that they still sell today. These are very similar to the same microphones they produced in the early to mid 50s for rock's biggest icons like Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis Presley, all the big stars back then used, for the most part, the Shure 55. 
That's why it's named the way it is. So this is the sound you get from it. Again, no compression, no equalization. So it only gets better from here. Let's move to the beta, sorry, the Sure Super 55. Looks a little different. Really the big difference you'll see is on the inside of the grill, it will be blue on the Super 55. Just a sec. Hold on, one thing I should show you here. It has a off, off and on button, which is kind of nice. The other two don't have that, but you'll probably be pushing a key anyway or stepping on a foot switch. Just a sec. We'll go to the Sure Super 55. All right, here's the Sure Super 55. A little brighter, not quite as full as the regular 55 but it does have some crispness to it a little more and steve you're right you got a good ear the regular 55 is not quite as bright as the 57 these are more for you know more of the high end more of the frequency high levels in your mid-range voice so the 57s are more delicate where the 55s are more Basey have a little more body to them. All right, we're going to go now to one of the two broadcast mics that I have for you. The first one is the one I use on the channel. This is the Electrovoice RE320. The RE320 is the first of three studio microphones that Electrovoice makes. They make the RE320 as the entry level, then the RE20 as the mid level. You'll see a lot of those on like ESPN or national news shows, things like that. Then you'll see the RE27. The RE27 is the top of the line for Electrical Voice. Electrical Voice has made mics for radio stations forever. I think, um, I don't remember a station I ever worked at that didn't use an Electrical Voice microphone. So let's move over to the first Electrical Voice of the two. Here's the RE320. Okay, hear the difference? There's no equalization, there's no compression, but you hear it, right? This is why you pay a lot more money for the Electro Voice more than you pay for the Shure 55 or 57. It has a rich, full sound that sounds much like what you hear in broadcasting because they're used in broadcasting. So. The RE320 is an entry-level Electrovoice microphone. They're right about $300 new right now. You can find them used for $150 to $200. Just make sure the condition is good. They also have a switch on them, which is used more for percussionists. It's called the kick drum switch, technically, but it, it does give a little bit more of a change to the, to the sound. Let me find the switch. Here it is. Now we'll play it with the switch. And we'll play it without the switch, switch, and without the switch. I've already switched it twice. Did you notice? This is in the A position. This is in the B position. Let's do it again. This is the A position of the Electrovoice RE320. This is the B position of the Electrovoice RE320. You hear it gets a little deeper right? A little more bass there. So it is. And Steve, you're right. Again, good ear. Electro Voice has a lot more well-rounded sound. It really brings everything together. You can imagine how this sounds with compression and equalization. In fact, I'll give you a little taste of it, okay? We're just going to add an exciter, only mic exciter, and listen to the difference, okay? Now we have an exciter in there. You start hearing a little more of that depth, all right? Now we add compression. And again, your radio has compression in it. Just don't overuse it or you'll splatter everywhere, all right? So add some compression to it. And now you've got that radio voice, right? You hear how everything just sounds right and tight. That's how you want it to sound using compression. If you use it too much, 
Well, you either gate it wrong and then you lose a lot of your voice or you don't gate it enough and you hear everything in your room. You don't want to do that. Now, we'll add some equalization just to full it out. And we'll do the same thing with the last microphone as well, right? Okay, so now we've got some equalization. Now here's EQ, exciter with compression and the... Um, Let's see, the EQ, the mic, the exciter. Yeah, they're all here. So compression, exciter, preamp, EQ. Everything in one package. Here's how it sounds on the 320. Let me move now to the RE20. I'm going to close everything off here that we're not going to use. Just leaving the preamp on only and taking out the equalizer. This is a microphone, by the way, <clears throat> excuse me, that you can use without an EQ and you're gonna have a lot of fun with it. It's such a great microphone. This is my favorite mic, I'll be honest. It's it's not as bassy as the RE20. That's probably the reason I love it, but the RE20 is a solid mic. Let's move to that one next. Okay, this is the Electrovoice RE20. This is the mid-level for Electro Voice microphones. Now, if you listen to the difference between the 320 and the 20, the 20 is used in many radio stations and many television stations throughout our country. But the RE27 is also used because it brings a lot more of the full sound of the human voice together. This mic is very well known to be a little bit Basie, okay, you can hear it in this microphone compared to the 320. Let me hit the kick drum setting on this so you can hear the difference. Here it is in the A setting. So the A setting of the RE20, again, hear the difference. It's a little bassier than the 320. And then in the B position, hear how bassy it just got it gets real deep here on the B position. So if you want a microphone that's going to give you a lot of bass and punch, the RE20 is a great microphone. It runs right about 450 right now, retail brand new, and you'll have a real broadcast quality microphone. Again, like I said on the mic comparison show earlier, what our engineers did in radio and every station I ever, you've ever worked at, literally, it's got to be an engineer like secret. All they did was throw a Nerf ball on top for a pop filter. That's all they did. They just cut out a Nerf ball, easy to put on there, and away they went. So this is the RE20. And let's run the same thing. We'll add compression. We'll add an exciter. We'll add the EQ. First, we'll add the exciter to this on the RE20. This is going to bring a little more brightness to it. You see it also brings a little bit depth. Also, the brightness comes in a little bit more on the S. The semblance on this microphone is pretty strong, okay? Next, we'll add the compression. Now you'll start hearing the broadcast sound that this is famous for. All right, so now you've got that broadcast quality sound that you typically hear on radio stations or television stations. And it also is a power-hungry little monster. I'll be honest with you. This is something that is very, very hungry for power. So you're going to need something. And you know what, what Jonathan asked here is a great question. Don't apologize. It's a great question. Could you talk a little bit about hooking these mics up to a radio? Is a mixer panel or some other hardware required? Great question. It depends on how much you want to go into it. Okay. Let me add the EQ to this and we'll just finish this part off. All right. So this is now with EQ pulls a little bit more of the bass out, but it still leaves it, you know, real full. This is the RE20 by Electro Voice. This is the A position and then, excuse me, this is B, sorry, B position and we'll bring it to A. It's going to bring some of that bass out. All right. So now we're out of that B position where it's real deep throated and it comes out a little bit more bright. That's the RE20. Let me move back to my 320 because I can use I can use my hands then, not be holding on to a microphone just a sec.
Okay, Jonathan, on your question, you, you've got a great question. And I had the same questions originally a long time ago. I knew it, how to do it, like with podcasting, but with the ham radio, it's different because you do need some sort of phantom power. It either takes phantom power or 48 volts. Now, there is a connection cable kit made by a ham named Whiskey 2, uh, IHY, I believe it is, Whiskey 2, India Hotel Yankee. Yeah, that's the guy who makes them. And he makes them for any radio. You got an Elecraft, an ICOM, uh, Kenwood Flex, whatever. So he makes them. Push the talk switch on your finger, or you can, you know, stomp on it with your foot. Pretty easy. Now, what you need to use this is going to be at least a preamp. The preamp is necessary because you need the power. If you were to use this, say for example, and use a product like this, okay? Let's say you bought something like this, like I did, for an XLR to a USB. Nice to have if you're doing remote work like I like to do with the shows, but for a radio, it's not going to help you. But it will if you're using certain preamps. Keep in mind, this kind of microphone or this one are both going to require phantom power or 48 volts. That's just what they require to make their power. It's what they do. It's how they work. Now, on the shores, you still have to have some. It's just the way it works. How it works in the chain, you won't need a mixer. You don't need that at all. What you need to do is put your microphone into a preamp. That's first. Then run it into your mic input. Okay. You, you've got to have it that way. Now, I would first caution you to check with the manufacturer who makes the radio to make sure you're doing it correctly because you don't want to blow anything out in your rig. But you do need at least phantom power or in the case of the electric voice you need 48 volts without it you've got nothing in fact i'll turn off 48 volts on my preamp okay i'm going to turn off the compressor the compressor excuse me the eq and i'll turn off the exciter okay so now we're just running flat now if we put off the phantom power gone see you see the difference hear that 48 volts, not there, okay? But if I bring it back, that's the difference. You see, one thing I can tell you is on my gain on my Focusrite Solo, which is my interface device, because I use analog gear to run into YouTube. It converts analog to digital. You you, you have a way, in fact, if I got the, the, the um, here it is. It's almost like I was prepared today. All right, here's the W2 ENY cable, okay? You gotta, you gotta forgive me, folks. We just came back from a long trip. Here's a good example of what he does. You get a push to talk switch. This is funny by Heil. It's pretty good. Uh, question by Steve, any impedance matching required to interface from XLR to radio mic in? Yes, there can be. That's why you need the 48 volts. That's why you need it. That's why that phantom power is necessary. Now, to hook this up, for example, you're going to use your mic input on the outside. You're going to put this XLR cable in, and then you're left with one more set of items. You're left with a plug-in, and you're left with a um, headphone jack. Excuse me, another another. Uh, this is an XLR Y connection. So how you do this, you're going to plug this into your rig and you're going to take the XLR, plug it into your mic. You're going to take this and this is going to go into a preamp. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's how it's going to work. By doing that, then you take the output from the preamp and run it it's going to go through these cables. It's going to go right into your microphone, which is right on this cable right there. It goes right in your mic. So plug it in your mic in the front. Make sure all your connections are tight and good. And, you know, it, it doesn't cost as much as you might think. Guitar Center, 
Music Go Round, those kind of places have great deals on used gear. You can always find these things. They're not that expensive. I use a Behringer. Uh, I think it's a 2600 Ultra Gain Pro. So that's my preamp. But you can pretty much use almost anything. Okay. So without using that, you literally have this. Hi, everybody. Good to talk to you. How are you today? Good to see you. Now let me turn the preamp off. That's what you face with the rig. You have to have some sort of power for the mic, just the way, way it works. Who makes an appropriate preamp? You know, I like Behringer products. They're, they're affordable. They're not that hard to find. There's lots of folks that have them. They've been well tested over the years. Musicians love them. You can find those pretty much at any like guitar center. Easy to find. Just look for a preamp that has both an XLR in as well as an eighth inch jack out. Because keep in mind, what you're going to do is, again, whoops, this is going to go into your radio, right? So into your radio there, as I'm losing microphones. <laughs> this is the way today has been. I'm not kidding. Today has been like this. Hold on. <laughs> you got to see a taste of my today. Literally everything. <laughs> it started with um, it started with the with my connection cable to the rig. It broke. I'm like, how does that break? And is it broken inside the radio? Thankfully, it wasn't. Anyway, what you do, you're gonna plug this in to. Whoops, excuse me. Let me get the right part. Okay, so the W2 ENY cable. I recommend them highly. This is a Heil cable, but W2 ENY makes a similar product cheaper. And I love Heil. In fact, I'm using a Heil parametric receive audio system. I plug the heck out of them, but this is a ham that makes them. It's a side business for him and he does a good job. Okay. Are they to this level quality? No, I've had both and the Heil is stronger. It's a better system. So what you're going to do, you'll plug this into your rig in your mic input. Okay. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to plug your microphone in the XLR. So now you have your mic plugged into your radio, okay? The next thing you have to do is you've got to get power. The power has to come in from the preamp. You plug it in with the eighth jack. Now you can get a one eighth to an XLR if you want. Those are easy to find. You just plug it in either way. And then you go the output, which is here. <laughs> so many cables, it's funny. You go here. And that goes so you can basically get the, the return feed, you know, into, um, I think it's headphones on this one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how it works. It's pretty simple. It's really easy to use. Contesters use these. They're, they're really effective. The, I don't know if I like the hand switch better or if I like the foot, the foot pedal better. They're both good. But in all honesty, you're going to need phantom power or a 48 volt. Not hard to find probably cost you a hundred to 150 bucks. The microphone, this one cost me 150 and it was in good shape. I was grateful for that. Um, these here run right about, I think 80 bucks, the 57s, both the A and the regular 57. The 55s run about 99, about 75 to hundred bucks, depending upon, you know, and I'm talking new prices. So that's what those run. And then this microphone here, used about 150 new 300 the electro voice re20 is 450 used between three and 350 right about there should be good and you know make your shack sound good again keep in mind i'm running nothing but a preamp now there's nothing here if i add the compressor and the eq it brightens things up makes it more full it depends on what you want to do keep in mind with your sideband signal for ham radio you only have 2.7 kilohertz to 3 kilohertz to work with, unless you're using a flex, which you could go way out there. Some Yaces will run 4K. Some, uh, let's see, I believe, not ICOM. ICOM stuck at 2.9. The Kenwoods, I believe, will go to, is it 3.6? 3.6? Anyway, you only have so much bandwidth to put your full frequency into. That's why if you've ever listened to an, you know, extended single sideband. Lots of people frown on that because they don't like people using up 
you know, a six to 10 K bandwidth part of a band. I get it. And really it's against FCC rules too. You're not supposed to do it. So if you're experimenting or testing, that's one thing, but if you're holding conversations regularly, that's another thing. I think ESSB maybe has this place. You're having some fun, but not on a regular basis. Cause there's, you got to share the bands. We've got to all have space to work. So ESSB, while I like it because it brings you full range, it does take away from everybody else. And I don't think that's fair. So I do believe that if you want to use this, make sure you understand only 2.7 kilohertz to work with to 3.6 is not going to be a ton. And the thing to keep in mind, please don't run heavy bass because you don't want to use up so much of that, that bandwidth with bass because bass isn't heard really well on sideband. Mid range is. That's why the 57, I think, was it Steve that mentioned this earlier? I think it was Steve. Yeah. This microphone's a great starter mic. It's bright. It brings up, and this is the 57 Beta, the 57 Beta A. So Beta 57 by Sure. It brings up your mid-range. That's how you're heard. Mid-range frequencies are strong. In fact, on the Heil Parametric Receive Audio System, it has a special area there. Sorry, I keep popping the pop filter here tonight. Wow, sorry about that. Let me show you real quick on this, just to give you an idea of how important that mid is, okay? Here's the parametric receive audio system by Heil, okay? This is what it looks like when I pull the camera cover off, sorry. All right, so there it is. Now take a good look here. Here's the mid range. It's got its own section on the parametric receive system and there's a reason for it. When you listen to a sideband signal, right between 800 hertz and 2.5 kilohertz is where things really work with the human voice. You actually can use this product as a noise reduction tool. It's amazing what you could do with this. Now I've lost focus, sorry guys. And, and Heil, there you go. So that's the Heil Parametric Receive Audio System. Works great as a noise reduction tool. In fact, I use it a lot for noise reduction here and I think it's fantastic, I really do. In fact, when the K4 comes, We'll keep using this because I just would rather use that than use the standard stuff on the K4. And I think the K4's got great stuff already in it, some great specifications. I think it's a wonderful rig that they're building. So my my advice to you, start out with a smaller mic first. <clears throat> Work with it. Sorry, the voice keeps cracking. It's been a long week. Start with maybe a smaller mic first, whether you go with a 57 or a 55, whatever you might go with. And another one bites the dust and another one's down. Okay. So go ahead and go with one of those to start out with and then see how you feel with it. Because again, you only have limited bandwidth to use it. Once you get that mic exciter and once you, sorry, once you get the, the preamp, and if you want to go more in, you've already got a compressor on your radio. You can use that. Use it. You already have an EQ there. Use that too. The microphone's only going to enhance your sound. That's all it can do. Can't make you louder, but it can make you sound better. Okay. But keep in mind, you only have a small amount of frequency. Don't run the bass heavy. You will be pretty sad on that. That's not a good spot to go because you won't be heard very well. I love the Heil. I really do. In fact, I'll tell you, I, I've asked my wife, for the Christmas present, I want the speaker for it because I don't have the speaker. I just have the parametric receive system listening out of the headphones. I'd like to have the rest of it. I love this thing. I really do. For, for people that really like to work DX like I do, this has pulled in stations for me that I just could not understand without it because I'm able to artic get the articulated word of the call sign by turn in the mid range and be able to adjust the gain up or down. I think the, the Heil parametric right now is about 250. It's worth it. It's the best thing I bought for my shack. Really right there is the very best thing. So it does, it is expensive, but I promise you, if you put this parametric receive audio system in and you start using it like with headphones first, if you don't buy the speaker too, you'll wonder how you got along without it. You really will. It's that special. And I get nothing for this. I mean, I bought it. So, I mean, I can say what I want. I can tell you it's terrible. But the point is, I love it. Use it all the time. And you're welcome. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, John. That's a very nice compliment. 
That's my hope here. So start with a smaller mic. See how you like it. If you do, work your way up. Get yourself an Electro Voice or, or a similar type product that's really strong, that has a good full sound. And you're going to love every moment you're on the air. And those audio reports, they're going to be A-OK. Yeah, back in studio. A little bit difference. A little bit difference here. We've got the 7300 up, the 5000s up. The K3 is there. So we've got the three up and the K4 arrives. I think we, I think it's in January. I've got to check my order, but we're excited for the K4. That'll be fun. And then we'll move the 101. So, but, but radio's fun. This is, this is all I ever wanted to do. That's all. This is it. That's all I ever wanted to do from being a little kid to just be on the radio. So it's been my pleasure to show you some radio mics today. Take a look at them. See what it costs to add yourself a preamp, buy the kit for the, you can get either from Heil or you can get it from W2ENY. His uh, call sign again is Whiskey2 Echo. I think I said I before. W2ENY, that's Whiskey2 Echo November Yankee. You can find him once you just Google search that number, you know, that, that call sign, it'll come up. Or go to his QRZ page. All his information is there. Again, the Heil system is a really rugged one. I think it's really good. W2NY, smaller gauge wire, not quite as stout as the Heil, but very workable. It's good stuff. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is show number 94. If you do me a big favor, I'd love to have you subscribe. We'd like to have people find the channel that would love to have a hobby in ham radio. I promise you, you're not going to see any commercials on this channel ever. I refuse because I hate hitting that skip ad button. Don't you hate that? I hate that too. IQ. Hey man, it's been a while. Where you been? It's good to see you. Thanks for coming tonight. We're just closing the show and you can't. Thanks for being here, everybody. Show number 95 comes up tomorrow. We're going to move CQ calling. We're going to try and move it to tomorrow. We've got some power now. We've uh, got the ALS 1306 here. It's now wired and ready to go. But by the time I got everything done, it was a little too late. So thought you'd bring something up with microphones and let you hear the difference. Thanks for watching, everybody. Ham Radio Live is designed to help teach people ham radio that they can get into the hobby and enjoy it for a lifetime. We promise you no ads. We just ask that you subscribe. Until next time, God bless you. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, everybody. Have a nice evening.